Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting with the next session, and it is going to be a product showcase by Credit Saison India. And the topic for the product showcase is co-lending. For that, may I please invite on stage Miss Snehil Gupta, SVP Business Head Partnership, Credit Saison. Can we please put our hands together for Miss Snehil Gupta? Hey, so I'm Snehil. Um, I'm heading the partnerships businesses at Credit Saison India. And I would like to start by introducing uh, a briefly about Credit Saison India first. So Credit Saison India is a registered systematically important NBFC in India. We have our global MNC parent, CS Tokyo. Uh, and Credit Saison Tokyo is a listed entity in Japan. And we are one of the biggest credit card issuers in Japan. In India, we started our operations around 2000, early 2019. We got our NBFC license in 2019. As of today, as I'm speaking, we are very close to touching 10,000 crores AUM mark in our past four years of operations. With this as a quick background, I would like to get started. And I know we are already at the second day of the FinTech Festival, and this is also a post-lunch session. So I would like to keep this session as engaging and as simple as possible. And in fact, on the note of simplification, the product that we are showcasing today enables banks to co-lend with Credit Size on India in a super simplified way. Let me show how. So while we are getting the slides, um, let me also you know, kind of talk about, just introduce what is co-lending, while most of the, I'm assuming most of the audience here would understand what is co-lending. But in November 2020, RBI came up with a specific framework that allows a bank to partner with an NBFC. And in this sort of a model, basically bank provides the capital and NBFC happens to be the originator of the loans. What this means is a win-win proposition for both the bank as well as the NBFC, who then um, work in partnership. Uh, uh, yeah, we can proceed, by the way, and I'll continue. Who then work in partnership to provide, um, to provide loans to the end borrower. And just to be very clear, this particular framework had been issued by RBI to also promote PSL, inter, uh, which is priority sector lending in India, and to promote financial inclusions for the underserved credit, uh, for the underserved customers and borrowers in India. So, um, by the way, co-lending is quite the buzzword as far as the lending landscape in India is concerned. In FY23 alone, uh, our only public sector banks had reported a co-lending book of 25,000 crores. In this fiscal, we are expecting this to be around 1 trillion crore Indian rupees, which is definitely a very formidable volume by any means. Now let's understand why, you know, why, what is it that makes co-lending such a, a, a lucrative proposition for both the banks as well as, as, well as the NBFCs. We understand, like, when, whenever somebody, you know, talks about NBFC, one of the core strength that we bring is our distribution reach, our agile systems, our ability to adapt to the changes work on the new processes, our IT systems, and so on. So for example, in Credit Size on India, when we started building our MSME verticals, we do not rely on financial system, uh, fin audited financials alone to underwrite any MSME borrower. Our team has the ability to look at alternate data such as the GST returns, or the bank flows, or, or the bank statements, or the cash flows, to actually underwrite. And how this helps us is, it makes our penetration in the market much deeper and much wider. So naturally, when a bank partners with CS India or any other NBFC, they have an advantage to go much deeper into the markets, which on their own, they cannot because of the limitation, because of their sizes, they are not so agile. Um, and obviously, when they do this, they have the advantage to also build a PSL compliant book, because in India, banks are required to hold 40% of their average net outstanding credit only in the PSL categories. So definitely, it's like a win-win proposition. Now, when it is about the NBFCs, Needless to say, obviously, NBFCs get access to a cheaper source of capital and deeper capital markets. More importantly, which is a point lesser touched upon, um, as in NBFC, when we do only on balance sheet lending, I am limited by the leverage norms that I'm supposed to adhere to. Whereas, if we end up building an off balance sheet book, um, there are no leverage, no, no very fixed sort of leverage norms. Of course, it's about various sort of risk appetite which we adhere to. But in off-balance sheet lending, I have the ability to basically grow on our asset base and in return, unlocking more returns on the capital employed. 
overall, if I talk about co-lending as a process, as opposed to, say, existing structures like securitization, co-lending helps in creating a continuous pipe which helps both the bank as well as the NDFC in building a scalable and robust book building mechanism. I would, now, I would now like to talk about the specific benefits that a bank can enjoy when they actually do the co-lending with Credit Suisse on India. Firstly, um, this is our core proposition. We are a tech-led neo-lending conglomerate with a global MNC parent. And honestly, it says a lot about us. Right, because at the core, we are a tech-enabled company. That means we will always be at the edge of whatever we can do the best in technology, we will always deliver. Secondly, since we have a global MNC parent listed in, listed in Tokyo, there is a lot of strength. Uh, and although we are a new entity in India, but there is a lot of experience that we already bring on the table. We are a Crystal AAA rated NBFC. And again, it speaks, it's, it's, a, it's a testimony to the fact that we are a financially stable entity with very, very high governance norms. Over the past four years of operations in India, we have developed in-house knowledge on how to build tech-enabled processes, which are also well within the right regulatory norms, and all of these are compliant processes. Lastly, and most importantly, what is propelling our Credit Saison's growth story in the country today is our MSME Direct vertical, wherein we are dispersing more than 150 crores a month through our branch-led businesses. And this, of course, when we are talking about a partnership with a bank, this is the vertical we want to focus upon. And this is where a bank also gets to book their PSL compliant book. Uh, I'm now, now, since it's a product showcase, obviously I'll take a few more, you know, few more slides to kind of talk about the product and its specialities. So uh, the starting point over here is our books, because we are uh, generally in India, we are looking forward to building a CLM2 sort of a process, while the platform will have the ability to also support CLM1 wherever there is enough interest. Enough interest. So our starting point happens to be the PS, uh, PSL compliant SME loans, which have already been booked by the KSF. Now, when a lender comes into partnership with us, they are given access to a streamlined LOS workflow, which, uh, which is quite modular. It's a dashboard enabled. And at the heart of it, for the LOS, we are running a very intelligent BRE, which is configurable as per every individual lender we are going to work, work with. We have a tech stack with ready-to-use system-ready reports. On top of it, there is an adaptable LMS module which gets tuned in to whatever the lender's CBS, like the co-banking system's requirements are going to be. So we, um, the very thought process behind this platform is how do we, you know, kind of overall simplify co-lending processes for the public sector banks in India. So when we decided upon the architecture, we thought it will keep it very configurable, very adaptable. So, and when I'm talking about the configurability, the platform has the capability to support um, configurations at a product lender level. So what I mean by this is, say today a bank comes to us and we start off with an unsecured business loan, we will configure the BRE for that. But uh, the same BRE with a different set of rules will be very uh, quickly able to adapt to support, say, a secured product like a uh, loan against property or any other product for that matter. So that's how configurable and modular this product is. Uh, as mentioned, there is a BRE to support. The workflow on the LOS side also adapts itself. And the reconciliation is absolutely at the core of our offering because in our journey also, we understand the pain which is there. And co-lending is quite a complex process, especially when it comes to accounting, uh, sorting out the accounting differences between two very different systems. So we have ensured that there is enough and more focus on how we can make reconciliations easy. This is very ably supported by a configurable and adaptable LMS that supports co-lending in the respective shares of both the lenders. So fundamentally, uh, I'll just take, um, you know, this is going one level deeper. After this, we will also be showcasing a video of, of our product, but you know, just to kind of give the glimpses of what we have as far as our LOS workflow is concerned, we have a modular workflow. What I mean by this is, say, for example, if the decisioning system needs to be reconfigured for a bank A versus a bank B, it is very easy and very uh, simple to do it. The credit policy checks, again, can be configured as per the different lender and the different product that we are working upon. 
uh, we, we also have the ability to actually showcase the risk scorecards of every individual bank and which can be configured for a different bank. It's just some backend rules that we have to change, but the, but the risk scorecard, which is still at the heart of underwriting by most of the banks in India today, that comes right on the dashboard for, the, for them. Um, business rule engine helps in auto funnel creation for both us as well as the bank, because once they have tasted this, they can simply rely on the BRE and they can just continue looking at this funnel, which has been auto filtered and auto checked by our BRE. Servicing systems, uh, like mentioned, accounting is definitely quite a complex thing to solve for when we are talking about co-lending. So we allow servicing and application of repayments at three different layers. One for the 100% share at which the loan has been originated. Then we allow it at an 80% share, which is the share of the lender. And this is as per the lender's config. And then obviously 20% as per our share, which can also be a balancing figure as per, as per the need here. Of course, we also support with the exact accounting entries creation in the GL's uh, format as needed by the bank's ERP. Reconciliation module is driven through a very user-friendly UX. Uh, we provide daily pause validations, daily DPD reporting, all the necessary things have been thought through. Overall, when any bank wants to do co-lending with Credit Saison in India, and this particular platform lowers down your cost with respect to time as well as your cost in terms of investing into the infrastructure, primary reason for this is we do not insist upon uh, very hard API integrations. We have a flexible API module and we also can support a very quick uh, go live just through a purely intuitive MIS and dashboard uh, way. Uh, with this, um, I would take a pause with the slides. This is the content I wanted to talk about. I would now like to get a video played, uh, which, is, which will give you guys a flavor of end-to-end -end co-lending module journey that we have built. Introducing the customizable and highly modular co-lending platform by Credit Saison India, we showcase the end-to-end -end CLM2 journey between CS India as the loan originator and a bank as the lender. This platform allows for role-based access to multiple users as per different personas. Both the lender and CS India get a dashboard that provides insights at the product partner level. LOS approval and LMS configurations can be customized differently for various products such as unsecured business loans, or loan against property. The co-lending journey begins with pushing the loan pool onto the platform. Loans undergo various stages from draft to in progress to assigned to lender. Every individual loan application is auto-checked through platform's BRE for completeness. It also adheres to pre-configured credit decisioning rules as per the bank's requirements. The BRE showcases the score of every loan application against each qualifying criteria. BRE rules are configurable for every product and every bank's individual credit policies. Only the loans that meet the qualifying criteria of the bank get assigned to the lender. The bank credit officers can view every assigned loan application in detail. They can also evaluate all necessary supporting documents, such as KYC, bank account statements, and more. The platform supports raising queries at the loan app level by the bank. The entire query resolution trail is maintained on the platform with built-in notifications at every stage. Upon completion of credit assessment by the bank officer, they can approve individual loans or loan pools. Disbursement-related details are recorded and maintained on the platform. The platform can generate customized loan creation files that can be uploaded into the bank's core banking system without mandatory system-level integration. Reconciliation is at the core of our offering. Accounting rules are configured at 100%, that is CS India level as well as the 80% lending share for the bank and again at the balance 20% for CS India. The platform provides loan level drill down views to account for differences in LMS systems of the bank and CS India in case of any. Availability of exact differences pointed at every individual loan level leads to easier resolution of reconciliation related issues. The platform provides accounting related reports that can be uploaded by the banks in their respective accounting systems to complete the loan life cycle. The platform also offers a configurable and bespoke reports module. This includes daily DPT reports, customer SOAs, dispersal and repayment reports, which can be further augmented as per the bank's requirements. For a smarter, more efficient co lending experience, choose Credit Sass in India today, a new lending conglomerate here to enable India's credit growth story. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. I think we are within time. Do we take questions? Yeah. Oh. Happy to take any questions, if, if any. Cool. Um, we are at 
Hi, uh, my name is Jisoda Gulia, representing my firm Choice Finserve. I just wanted to understand how you deal with a problem which is uh, at the end of, uh, you know, uh, third month of uh, DPD, that is when the client comes into NPA. So how you deal, do you feel any challenge where bank is asking you to close the loan with them and then you are supposed to report at your part for 20% in the Sibyl and uh, client is showing happy that yes, my 80% is closed and 20% is still there in the Sibyl. So that is the challenge we generally face. I, I think uh, many of the co-lending uh, pe I mean, people who are actually dealing with this co-lending part probably may relate my question. No, I think, um, see, I get what you are saying, but this sort of a problem should arise only when month-on-month um, -month reconciliations are actually not matching. That is the only reason why your 80% will be showing a different DPD status from the 20% status. Otherwise, both the lenders, as per the regulations, also are supposed to continue doing the bureau reporting. So unless there is a, actually a match in the accounting, this sort of a, this sort of a situation shouldn't arise. So I felt like uh, if I can see that there is no particularly guideline for NBFC to NBFC in the code ending. So we generally follow the guidelines which is provided by RBI for bank to NBFC where uh, bigger NBFC plays the role of bank and the smaller NBFC plays the role, role of NBFC. So in that case, in case we generally see that NBFC, the bigger NBFC always come into the co-lending picture when the smaller NBFC takes the entire risk of the their client because they are the gen uh, they are actually doing the credit and Understood, understood. So even in these sort of situations when it is a risk protected sort of a co-lending arrangements we are talking about and say there is a, uh, while in the accounting we can mark the loan as the closed, I think it is the responsibility of any RE to continue doing the correct bureau reporting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. So I saw that uh, on the video that you showed there was a pushing of the loan pool. Yeah. Does, does it work the other way also or do you first originate all the loans then push the entire pool to the bank or do you also, does the bank also participate at a loan level? So every time a fresh loan is originated then you essentially have an 80 20 or is it on pool level? So see there are fundamentally two models. Uh, one is the CLM1 model which is generally the co-origination or the BC model which is a common terminology with the banks. In this sort of a model what you are saying is the previous one right wherein a, and it is at a lead level. So the lead is actually shown to the bank and a bank takes a real time decision on the same. So that is a CLM1 model. And in the second one, which is the CLM2, for which we are we did the demo today, because in our experience, banks are generally more, um, you know, more used to doing CLM2. So we, that's where the demo stands for. There, the loan is already booked in our system, and then uh, these loans are already existing in our system. So while there can be a system upload of the selected files as per the agreed policies, there can also be a direct integration between the basically the dashboard as well as our system, so that this pool gets auto-populated in the dashboard that we were just showing to you. So you obviously disburse the funds to the borrower in any case and then the bank is just making you hold for that? In, in CLM2, you are right, because in CLM2 we have already disbursed the money and hence the loan is on our books. In CLM1, that is not the case for because it is a discretionary lending being done by the lender. If they are not comfortable, they will soon say no to the case. Now it is up to the NBFC. If they still want to go ahead and disburse the capital, they can, but there is no binding uh, reason to do so. Understood. So basically then in the CLM2 model there's obviously also no, there aren't two schedules like the CLM1 model essentially there were two schedules right. Uh, the customer just saw one but each lender had their own schedule. You're right. And this one it doesn't work that way obviously right because the money's already been disbursed the loan's been booked. So it's uh, there'll only be one schedule and that uh, at, at least at the borrower level and then does it break down into schedules later? Yeah, uh, so fundamentally, they, so for the customer, obviously, there is first RPS, which has been generated at the time of the disbursement. But as per the different accounting systems being followed, uh, what, and that's exactly what the solution we are seeing, that reconciliation is at, our, is at the heart of our offering, the system will support generation of 80% RPS as per the bank's accounting system. 
definitely there are going to be differences between the original 100% and the 80% that we are going to generate now. There are ways to address this or there are ways even if you know it doesn't get addressed at least we understand where the reconciliation related differences are coming and which is what we were saying there is a loan level drill down available. So you get pointed to exactly why the differences are. So even then at least it is easier for both the organizations to close their accounting at the end of the month. Understood. Thanks for answering my questions. Yeah. You're welcome. Yes. See, in our experience, most of the times the bigger lender here would agree that we are doing the DPD reporting in the same way. But for our for the internal purposes, internal reporting purposes, of course, banks will be maintaining two books. But you are right. If the lender doesn't agree, there may be slight differences, and the same. Yeah. No, not necessary. So that's what I'm saying. So if the lender agrees, then the bureau reporting can be done at a similar level, which is at the first 100%. But only in the cases lender doesn't agree, then you will actually encounter these situations. And then obviously it is up to the customer service team of the NBFC to handle such situations and explain why. One last quick question, sir. Quick yeah. question. Yes. I actually have three small bullet points. Number one, if you've had API integrations done with the lenders, with the primary lenders. Yeah. How has been your experience of your API performance? That's number one. Number two, you mentioned about 80-20 ratio. In practice, there is no 80-20. There are multiple ratios. It could be 199. It could be 50-50 as well. How modular is your system towards that? And question number three, you did mention that some of the lenders follow different accounting balances, accounting practices. So it could be a different calendars, 360 over yes. and others. In this situation, when you split in the interim, when you have two repayment schedules going together, there would be a situation that the outstanding balances of the smaller lender will go above the actual disbursed amounts mathematically. How do you handle that? So I'll start off um, with the with the first one, which was on the different, uh, sorry, for which was with the API, integ API integration, right? So, um, see, that's what I was saying. We have a flexible API configuration. It is not mandatory to do the integration. And as we are speaking, we are in the process of going live with various lenders. Uh, but we also allow for a MIS-driven approach for which they, there is no need for an API integration. We can totally support it with the dashboard. The dashboard will give the out.